Good day everyone, you are welcome to the Sunday School Teaching of July 5th, 2020. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name for giving us another opportunity to learn at your feet. Lord, be thou glorified. We pray that you teach us, Lord, by yourself, and at the end of this teaching, Father, we pray that we shall have reasons to glorify your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Our topic for today's teaching is wisdom's vindication. Wisdom's vindication. For some weeks now, we've been talking, we've been discussing about wisdom. And today, we'll talk about wisdom's vindication. A devotional reading is taken from Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1 to 14. And a background scripture is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 1 through 19. So, I read the background scripture. Matthew chapter 11 from verse 7 through 19. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palace. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Verse 11 Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been riding it. For all the prophets and the Lord prophesied unto John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. 15. Whoever has ears, let him hear. To what I can compare this generation, they are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. 17. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. Verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Praise the Lord. Wisdom is proved right by her deeds. A golden test is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, He is a gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by their actions. Praise the Lord. Wisdom is proved right by our actions. Here we're talking about wisdom's vindication. Our lesson today is subdivided into two. We have the A part and the B part. So at the end of this lesson, we should be able to mention at least three Old Testament scriptures that testify that Jesus is the Messiah. And we should be able, as we study the life of John the Baptist, we should be able to discuss the significance of his ministry in his days. And making commitments to witness Christ as the Messiah and the wisdom of God through words and deeds. Praise the Lord. True words and deeds. The introductory part that we have here 
People often misunderstand the fact that the true identity of some highly respected personality are not easily recognized by people, especially when they are judged by their appearances. When they are judged by their appearance, you can you, you can't judge people by the way they look, by the way you see them, maybe on social media or the way you see people in church. Most people or almost everybody come to church, package themselves. So people personality cannot be judged by the way they appear. A story was told of a professor who went to another university in another state as an external examiner for some final year students. On his arrival at the campus, he, he met and made inquiry from a young lady for direction to the university guest house where he was to lodge. But unfortunately, the lady sounded unfriendly. She was neither polite nor willing to direct the man, probably because of the man's poor looking or whatsoever. Few days later, the lady was shocked when she met face to face with the same man she did not treat politely as an external examiner. So a, a question is here, if you were the professor, what would you have been what would have been your assessment? You know, this is a lady you met a few days back on the campus making some inquiries and this lady did not treat you politely. She treated you in a very rude manner and you happen to be an external examiner. What would have been your reaction? The lesson for today focuses on the ministry of John the Baptist. When he was rounding off, John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He came to prepare the, 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 the way for Jesus Christ. His mission was to prepare the people of Israel for the coming of the long-awaited Messiah, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who repented were baptized. However, towards the end of John the Baptist's ministry, he was imprisoned by the Antipas. He was put in the prison by the Antipas son of Herod the Great. John expected Jesus to come to his rescue, but Jesus' reply reminded him of the real reason he came to the world. When John the Baptist was passing through all these difficulties, he, he, he was expecting Jesus Christ to come to his rescue but uh, the, the response he got from Jesus Christ reminded him the reason why he was going through all those things and the reason of his existence. Praise the Lord. So we can find that in the book of Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 to 6. Same Isaiah chapter 35, verse 61. Sorry, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Which he was fulfilling Jesus is the Messiah whose prediction was confirmed by some Old Testament. We have some Old Testament prophets like Moses in Genesis. We have some old prophets like Micah. So these people, they, they, they confirm the, the coming of Jesus Christ. Our lesson today is subdivided into three parts. We have the A part which says the true identity of John the Baptist. The second one, the nature of the kingdom. And the C part says wisdom vindicated by our deeds. The identity of John the Baptist. In this first part of our lesson, we are made to understand and to, to, to know who John the Baptist is. Who is John the Baptist and what his ministry is all about. So truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, 
Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The character of John the Baptist, where he lived, his dressing, food, and the messages of repentance he preached were made known to us. And these messages made the people of his days to have different opinions about him. Before Jesus' public ministration and his ministry, John the Baptist was imprisoned. But when he heard about the teachings and miracles of Jesus Christ, he sent out some of his people to make inquiry to confirm if truly it was Jesus. If truly it was Jesus. And Jesus' answer indicates that the miracles were sufficient evidence of his messiahship. Let's see Matthew chapter 3 verses 7 through 12. It means that Jesus expected John the Baptist to recognize his identity as the Messiah from the miracles he was performing. Praise God. The true identity of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was imprisoned and he heard about the, 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 the miracles that Jesus Christ was performing. He sent people to go there to confirm if truly it was Jesus. And perhaps um, John the Baptist wanted to, to, to be sure if what Jesus was actually doing was in accordance to what he has preached about him. Jesus' response to John through his disciples was an avenue to confirm the true identity of John. And this response was contrary to people's view. What Jesus Christ responded to the disciples, it was contrary to their view. He said John was not a reed sway by the wind or a man dressed in fine clothes like people in the king's palace. Yes, because perhaps people's uh, expectation was that uh, this kind of person who will dress gorgeously, who will appear so fine or so kept so to say but jesus christ made them to understand that he's not a man that is dressed in fine clothes like people in king's Palace. he affirmed that he is a prophet of god who ushered in the long-awaited messiah with a specific message for the nation of israel praise the lord he's a prophet is the one who ushered in the long-awaited Messiah. The long-awaited Messiah is Jesus Christ and John the Baptist came before Jesus Christ. And we were made to understand that he did not have the opportunity of preaching the total plan of God for salvation of womankind after it was fulfilled. He preached before Jesus Christ came, but he was not opportuned to preach the total plan of God for salvation of womankind after it was fulfilled. John died before the events that brought about the salvation of womankind. So he did not preach the gospel of salvation based on the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. John the Baptist was only opportuned and one of the major uh, thing, one of the major ma major thing things he did, and one of the major things he preached was the coming of the Messiah. But he was not opportuned to preach the salvation, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. According to the New Testament, nevertheless, his ministry cannot be undermined because many believed confessed their sins and were baptized through it. Praise the Lord. Though it was not, though it was not opportune to witness the sin, what he actually preached, but his message was centered on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ here was said he is a long awaited Messiah. But despite this, we can, we, we, we cannot, uh, underestimate the, the, 
the 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 value or the relevance of John the Baptist ministry because even in his time people got saved and people got baptized through it praise the Lord the identity of John the Baptist a second or uh, part of this teaching says the nature of the kingdom the nature of of the kingdom verse 12 says from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and the violent people have been raiding it praise the lord the kingdom of god from the day of john the baptist until now has been subjected to violence Jesus follows one challenging saying with another that is even more, more challenging. The idea that God's kingdom can solve violence seems absurd. How could the rule of the Almighty be challenged by anyone? Praise the Lord. How could this happen? How could it be challenged by anyone? God's kingdom is great, but until it comes, in its fullness, God's people experience great hardship. Praise the Lord. We will talk about um, the, the nature of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is great. And we, the followers of Christ, we have to come to the understanding of the greatness of the kingdom of God. Until then, Jesus' followers experience the blessing and power of God reign in the midst of a world that opposes them. We are in the world that opposes us and we, we can even see that even John the Baptist was imprisoned. John the Baptist was imprisoned by Herod Antipas and his people because he spoke against Herod's saint. This could be found in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 2 chapter 14 verse 3 and 4 so we are in the world where anything we do that whenever we want to stand our ground the world there the world out there are not in support they're always against us so we have to maintain our ground we have to be sure of our savior jesus christ and we have to to know that whatever comes we are going for him we are ready to do. The seed part of our teaching says wisdom vindicated by our deeds. And our scripture for the seed part is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 11 from verse 16 through 19. Matthew chapter 11 from verse 16 through 19. To so what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the market places and calling out to others. Wisdom vindicated by our deeds. We are made to know that the people in the, in the era of John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus Christ, they were, they, they were peculiar in the way they do their things because they, 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 they were so much rigid. And they were not even ready to absorb the message of salvation that was preached by Jesus Christ and by John the Baptist. This is confirmed in Jesus' statement in verse 16. When he likened them to children who sit in the marketplace, calling out to others, saying, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. So the, the people in, this, in, in those days, in the days of Jesus Christ and John the Baptist, they, 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 were, they were so, so, so adamant. They were not ready to receive the message that was preached to them. The Jews acted like children as they refused to respond to the messages of repentance and salvation. The ministry of John was unique. You know, when we were talking, uh, the, B, uh, the A part of our teaching says the identity of John the Baptist. 
we, we were made to understand his way of life, how he eats, the way he dresses. And now, we are made to understand that the, the, the ministry of John the Baptist was unique because he fasted and drank no wine. Yet, he was said to have demons. See, someone that fasted and drank no wine. And these Jews, the people, said he had demons. On the contrary, Jesus who ate and drank was criticized and nicknamed a gluten, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors, and a sinner. But he declared that wisdom is proved right. Wisdom is proved right by actions and to recognize what is fitting, such as playing wedding music for a wedding ceremony and playing dirge for funerals. Similarly, statements in Luke chapter 7 verse 35 confirms that wisdom is vindicated by our children, by our deeds. So, there is a saying that we are all um, very used to, the saying that human beings are difficult to please. This statement is clearly seen in this passage because John the Baptist lives in isolation and absent from social life, yet the people called him demon. Jesus Christ's lifestyle was the opposite. He was available to all, yet people made excuses that he was a friend of sinners. So, how do we please people? Praise the Lord. Interestingly, he declared that by the testimonies of the mighty works of God through his ministry, the people will be convinced beyond doubt that he was the wisdom that God provided for the salvation of humankind. The de this declaration is confirmed by the multitude of people who sought him for solution to their problems because they could not deny the miracles they witnessed. Praise the Lord. These same people that attacked John the Baptist demonic were the same people that attacked our Lord Jesus Christ, a gluten and friend to the tax collectors and sinners. But don't forget that the sea party is wisdom vindicated by her deeds. There is no how we could please people. If you want to start living your life, expressing your life to, 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 to please people, or you want to start living your life to, to impress people, you are making a great mistake. Because we, we, in this passage, we could see two different um, lifestyles as a case study. We have the lifestyle of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was free and available to people. People tagged him. And we also see the life of John the Baptist, who lived in isolation, fasted, and his life was not even um, uh, a social life to say. And people also tagged him to be demonic. So there is no way you can live to please people. What we need to do as uh, children of God is to have a lifestyle that is measured to the will of God. Praise the Lord. We should live our life according to the will of God, according to the instructions of God. Praise the Lord. So wisdom vindicated by our deeds. So Jesus Christ declared that by the testimonies of the mighty work of God through his ministry, people will be convinced beyond doubt that he was the wisdom that God provided for salvation and humankind. As children of God, as Christians, the wisdom, the Christ that is in us, is the one that will vindicate. We are not we, we, we are not the one that, that that will be telling people that oh don't you know I'm a Christian? Your way of life, what you believe, what comes out from you, the way you relate with people, should be able to to show that you are a Christian, that you are a 
you are a child of God. It's not until you tell. Even we know that the, the Bible instructed us, Jesus Christ instructed us to go out preaching the word, the word of God, preaching the gospel. And at the same time, even Jesus Christ has preached the gospel to people. John the Baptist preached the word to people, and yet they did not receive the word. So, even after you've done your own part, you've gone to people, you fulfilled that great commission that you go ye into the world. You've gone into the world, you've preached to people, you've, you, you've done your own part. And also pray that the testimony that people will see, the great work that people will see, should draw people to God. Praise the Lord. So wisdom vindicated by our deeds. So this is how we come to the end of our teaching today. The first part says the true identity of John the Baptist. Be part the nature of the kingdom. The same part wisdom vindicated by our deeds. So now we go to our discussion time. Praise the Lord. We go to our discussion time. At discussion time, the first one under the part A, it says, Discuss the relevance of John's ministry. Is such ministry still relevant today? That's the first question. If the, the type of John the Baptist ministry is still relevant in our today's life. And the second uh, part says, John's message was majorly on repentance, probably because of the wickedness of the people of his time. What message do you think is appropriate for this present age? In this present age, what message do you think is appropriate? Praise the Lord. Is this still a message of repentance? Is it a message of prosperity? What message do you think is appropriate that is suitable for what we are going through in this nation, in the whole world at this time? Praise the Lord. Discussion. The B part. The first one says, Which group of people can be described as the violent men? Who have taken the kingdom of heaven forcefully today? Praise the Lord. Which group of people can be described as the violent men who have taken the kingdom of heaven forcefully today? Praise the Lord. You know, the scripture says in that verse 12 that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and the violent people have been reading it. Now the discussion or uh, part says which group of people can be described as the violent men who have taken the kingdom of heaven forcefully today the second question did jesus support recognition when he referred to john as the elijah that was to come in that verse 14 then the third part, the, the, the last discussion part. What are the rules of miracles in the message of salvation? What are the rules of miracles in the, in the message of salvation? Praise the Lord. You know, Jesus Christ says it in his word that by the words of their testimonies, see they, they were now coming back because it was Jesus that they went to when they have issues and Jesus was able to see them through. So what is the, the, the place of miracle, the place of wonders in the message of salvation? Discuss how the Messiah fits into the description of possessing wisdom from God. How does the how does Messiah fit into the description of possessing wisdom? from God. Praise the Lord. Our commitment based on today's lesson 
After today's lesson, you should have your own personal commitment, commitment to your church, and commitment towards your relationship with others. Our prayer points. 1. Pray for forgiveness of the sin of undermining the servants of God because of their appearance or personality. Pray that God will prove himself in your life and church through mighty miracles that will lead to salvation of others. Ask God for divine wisdom to discern what is right and wrong all the times. Servants of God have different personalities and style of ministry. Praise the Lord. Servants of God, they have different personalities and styles of ministry. Don't, don't because you've been to one um, gathering. This man, whenever this man is preaching this, his own way of doing things, so my own minister must also go in this same line. We are made to understand that servants of God have different personalities and styles of ministry. Christians should seek and apply divine wisdom as displayed in the, in the life and works of Jesus. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. Believers have been called to the ministry of preaching and teaching the word of God. We all have been called to the ministry. It's not only our pastors that man the pulpit. We all has been called in as much you call yourself believers, you call yourself Christian, you have you have been called to the ministry of preaching and teaching the word. No servants of God should be looked down upon for any reason. When God performs any miracle, it should lead Womankind to Christ. Praise the Lord. When God performs any miracle, maybe even through you, as a prophet, as an evangelist, as a prayer warrior, as a Christian, it should lead people to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's take our golden test again. A golden test is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Sorry, Matthew chapter 11 verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by our actions. Praise the Lord. Wisdom's vindication. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you for how far you've helped us through this lesson. Lord, we pray. That we open our inner eyes, our inner mind, Lord, for better understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the grace we need, Lord, to reign with you, as we've learned that the kingdom of God has been subjected to violence, and the violence people have been reading it. Father, we pray that you give us the strength and the enablement, the grace to reign with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the grace and the enablement we need, Lord, as we've called every one of us to the, to, the, to the ministry of teaching and preaching. Lord, to go into the world and tell the people about the good news. Father, we pray that you grant us the grace, Lord, to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you are good. We pray for the church of God that the, the, the gate of hell shall never prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen.